Welcome to this trail camera review video. I'm Frank of the Ocho Verde Wildlife Channel. In this trail camera review, we're going to take a look at the Bollyguard SG2060-D white flash trail camera. I'm in Costa Rica, so if you see or hear any strange animals in the background, that's why. Our first indications are that this is going to be a great trail camera. It's jam-packed with features for clear color night videos and tack sharp color night and day still pictures. Before we get too far along, here's what comes with the space saving and efficient box. You've got the standard instruction booklet, a C quality uh, camera strap, a camera to USB cable if you have to download your images in the field, and a great mounting hook for these cameras with one quarter inch uh, diameter tripod bracket. It works great with this camera because you have the receiving bracket on the bottom of the camera and that's great because it does work perfectly with that. One of the things I like about these brackets is that it actually keeps the camera away from being strapped to a tree and this is quite helpful because down here in Costa Rica we have a lot of rainfall and the trees act like a, almost like a a gutter system for the water and it comes right down and if it's strapped to a tree you get all that water hitting the camera and eventually it finds its way inside and I've noticed that by using these brackets you can keep it away from any kind of structure and you just get the normal 20 feet of rainfall that we've had this year as opposed to uh, all the rainfall that's coming down from the trees uh, onto the camera. The history of Bollyguard white flash cameras comes in about five generations with the 565F uh, there on the left that had the exterior remote. I've been using those cameras for almost 10 years now. Originally, they had five megapixels. Now they've gone up to eight, then they went to 12, and I think they're now at 14. Uh, however, those cameras are getting hard to find. But using that uh, external remote was a little bit difficult, but the pictures were just beautiful. The middle camera is one, uh, I can't remember the model number, but it, uh, it combined LED and a xenon flash, which is interesting. It seemed to work pretty well. Uh, I did have a few uh, items go wrong with it in the field, and I've kind of kept the camera on standby, but it caught some great animals. It caught a grisson one time and a very rare tree rat as well. The engineers at Bali have done a really outstanding job at making their cameras more durable over the years. At one time, we could only get one rainy season out of a camera before it just died. Now we've been able to get two, three, sometimes four years out of these cameras by upgrading the weather protection that Bali used and by using the L brackets, keeping these cameras away from the trees. So let's jump into the technicals. It's got an easy standard setup menu that's super simple to follow. There is a strong xenon flash for night color photos. This is excellent. It actually provides enough light for stop action photography and you get some really sharp pictures from it. For video, it has both xenon and LED illumination sources. It has a 14 megapixel image sensor and that's up from the standard five megapixels that were used in the older generation cameras. Detection and illumination range are up to 100 feet. It has a two inch LCD display screen on the inside. It has 14, 25 and 36 megapixel photo resolution and it has 1080p video resolution that can host videos as long as three minutes. It records sound with the videos and the camera uses a standard SD memory card from eight to 32 megabytes. You'll need eight AA batteries to power this camera. So let's look at some pictures. This first shot is of this chicken, and you can see that the color is brilliant. It actually pops 
it was kind of an overcast day and you kind of get that feel overall of looking at the picture. If we take a look at the information of the picture, you can see that it was a uh, 1 142nd shutter speed. The ISO was 50, which enabled it to get such a nice colored chicken. And it was a 9.5 megabyte picture, which means it's, uh, you know, has a lot of information in it. Now, the next shot is of this agouti and kind of the same day, not too much later after the chicken picture. And if we zoom in a little bit, you can see that even though the agouti is just a little bit uh, soft focus, probably because the camera was too close to it for the uh, focal point, behind it where you see that palm tree, you can actually see how sharp those needles are on the palm fronds. Really good indication of the quality of the photograph. And if we look at the information again, uh, it was 1 100th of a second uh, shutter speed, ISO was 101, and 10.1 megabyte photo, which contains a lot of information. Now for the night picture, uh, it was a Xenon flash. It was a little bit hot in my opinion. And again, I think I had the camera just a little bit close to the subject and the tree had a whitish bark. But let's take a look at the information. Okay, we've got 1 1 16th of a second, which seems a little slow to me, and ISO of 800, which is still pretty good for re receiving uh, a lot of color in the shot. Uh, I think this camera did a good job with that particular subject in that situation. This is a day shot of a squirrel. It's good sound, good quality. There's a little bit of a lens flare. And here's another shot of me walking away from the camera on an overcast day during daylight. Here we are using the LED for illumination. This is a dog eating a banana. Looks pretty good. This next shot is of an opossum with the xenon flash illumination. It seems a little bit hot again. And this is me actually walking up on the camera. This is what our uh, bodyguard camera looks like when it comes on in the middle of the jungle right here. 20 seconds of video. Totally blinds the fool out of you. All right. That's what it looks like. And here's the camera's point of view. So you can see there's a, this great color, great uh, illumination. It's super for a trail camera. Very impressive. A couple of the things I don't like about the camera, and they're kind of minor. The first is if you can see the red arrow there, that points down to a gap in the sound of the video for the first 15, 20 frames. Secondly, there's also a slight lag in trigger time. And again, maybe it was because I had the camera pointed down too much. It couldn't quite get a picture of the ocelot. And you can see that the camera didn't really start going until the ocelot was halfway across the frame. But I made an adjustment and I think that it solved the problem as I think I had the camera tilted down a little too much where the, uh, the uh, sensor couldn't see a bigger area where the uh, cat actually emerged from. So my overall impression is that this is a great camera. Uh, as you know, Bali Guard has got a long history of excelling at white flash photography and they've taken the next step in white flash um, videos with this camera. The uh, video is excellent and the sound quality is excellent as well. And I think this camera is going to do just fine. I'm excited to see the results when I get back down to Costa Rica and see what we've collected uh, over these past four or five weeks. Right now, the camera is at Amazon for about $149. I'll include a link down in the description box. So if you want to click on that, you can get there easily. So please be sure to check out more of our trail camera videos here on the Ocho Verde Wildlife Channel. Thanks for watching. See you soon.